I'm either reading a ton or I'm crafting a ton. I would like to somehow mix them together so I am like knitting and listening to an audiobook. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Fennel and Fiber podcast. If you do not know who I am, I'm Misa, uh, sometimes known as Fennel. Um, it's been about a month and I had planned on filming twice a month and then I got kind of lazy and as you can tell I'm sitting in yet another setup because I just couldn't be bothered. Um, to do an aesthetically pleasing setup and I really just want to talk to you all about knitting today so um, since I've switched up what I'm filming with um, my options are a little limited and I do have to take my setup down every time I'm done so um, it's not glamorous but it is what it is if you're looking for a more aesthetically pleasing podcast this might not be it. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of finished objects. I have a lot of whips. Um, not really any announcements, I don't think. We are still doing the uh, RIP 2020 cal, which is going to go till the end of the year. Um, your craft of choice, um, whatever it may be, cross-stitch, knitting, sewing, painting, whatever you choose to do is... Um, more than welcome into the entries. Uh, you can either submit an entry um, on our Discord, which is linked in the description, I believe um, it is there. It should be there. Um, or on Instagram using the hashtag RIP2020CAL. So that's, I think that's all I have for announcements. Um, not anything super fancy. Uh, so should we get into the crafting? Does that sound, should, should we do that? Should we do that? Let's do it. Um, let's start with finished objects. Like I said, there's not many and one of them is actually really old. Uh, I've had quite a bit of cast on itis, you might say. So I've cast on a lot of projects and it's delayed me from finishing a few, but I am not letting myself cast on anything else, kind of, which we'll get into. But I guess we'll start from oldest and work into newest. So I did start this sock head hat quite a while ago. Um, I actually filmed when this was a whip. Um, this is Dead Flowers by um, Tommy of Dynamite Trujillo, a fantastic podcaster, amazing dyer, and just stunning human being. Um, I made this a while ago, like a while ago. Um, this is the sock head hat. I'm not sure if I said that. It fits so well. I absolutely love it. Um, and there's really not a whole lot to say about it. I, I love the colors. Um, they're not super bright and I like the purple. It's just very, it's very good. And it was a quick knit. Um, it's just a hat. All of you know by now, if you don't, hats are my jam. Uh, this one I breeze through. I'm actually working on another sock head hat, which I'll show you guys later, but this is a personal favorite. I wear it practically every day. Last time I spoke with you, um, I did share a shawl, the Libra shawl that I was working on. Well, turns out I don't keep track of where I am in a pattern very well. I was, I was just gonna frog back a few rows and be on my way with it, but then I decided to just frog the whole thing. Um, I, I just frogged it. I, I basically, I wasn't really loving the pattern very much, um, and so I ended up making something else, and it is this kerchief. Um, it's called the Dots Kerchief, uh, and this is by the Crazy Sock Lady. Again, another really amazing um, podcaster, Instagram um, face, and uh, just a really sweet person. Um, and this was, I believe the pattern says that this was inspired by um, her grandmother, and it's just a seed stitch kerchief. It's really easy. Um, I actually went up 
a needle size or maybe I went down a needle size anyway this is a little bit drapier than what I would have liked so I'm actually planning on knitting another one but like I said I'm not casting on anything new at the moment but this was really fun and worked up very quickly um, I really love the blue uh, it's it's really good it's real nice but anyway Again, this was very straightforward, really mindless. I think that's why I got it done so quickly. Um, and it's really cozy. Actually, I haven't been wearing it as much lately, which I don't have a good reason as to why I haven't been wearing it. Yeah, I, de I definitely just need to be wearing this a bit more um, because it's super cozy. So that's my kerchief. Um, <laughs> this hat is another finished object. First of all, I'm not usually one to go all out with the pom-poms like this, but I mean, how can you not? Look at how floofy it is. It's wonderful. Um, this hat is knit. Um, there is no pattern for this. I just wanted a chunkier hat, another really quick knit. The only thing that I would have done differently is I would have done more ribbing. Um, I probably would have done at least up to, I think maybe here would have been good. This is knit with um, three strands of Valkyrie fiber uh, sock yarn. Um, all of them are Middle Earth inspired uh, and they're all gorgeous. I absolutely love this hat. It's, um, it's really cozy. I thought that this was going to be a hat that I wore um, outside only, but I do find myself um, wearing it in the house, just chilling. Um, it's super warm. And again, because it's three strands of fingering weight, it took me like an hour to knit. Um, and again, no pattern, just just knitting hats as I do because I love knitting hats. <laughs> um, and then our last finished object, which is a half finished object. Uh, when I talked to you all last episode, I was going to cast on a pair of socks. For those of you who might be new, I do have a challenge to knit uh, 30 pairs of socks before I turn 30. Uh, I'll be 26 on Monday the 12th, so I've still got plenty of time. Uh, but so far I've only knit two pairs of socks since I started that challenge. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but I was going to start these socks and I have started them. Um, and this is sock number one. Uh, this yarn is called You Can Pickle That. I, the name of the yarn dyer is escaping me, but you all know that I always put this stuff in the show notes below. And uh, sock blockers are from Knitting Left. I absolutely adore these. They're like little rain clouds. Um, these are really gorgeous. And um, the pattern is the Rose City Rollers pattern, except I did a ribbed cuff instead of... Um, a rolled cuff and I did the rounded toe so um, yes I have also learned that I need to knit both my socks at the same time so I'm not going to be knitting two socks at a time instead uh, on one needle I'm gonna be knitting two socks on two needles if that makes sense I actually saw um, Sandy from uh, San uh, by the lakeside Sandy by the lakeside you probably know who I'm talking about um, she knits socks like that, but she does them on double pointed needles. I have since started knitting on uh, circular needles. I do like Magic Loop, though I'm not opposed to double pointed needles. I knit my first two pairs of socks on double pointed needles. This is my first sock on Magic Loop, and I, I do enjoy it. Um, I think I'll stick with this for now. Um, I'm not like itching to get back to DPNs. Uh, that's all I have to say about Magic Loop. <laughs> Um, so, so this is my half finished object and uh, I'm really excited to be able to wear these and I'm also really excited that it's Socktober. I think Socktober was exactly what I needed to kick myself into high gear wanting to um, knit because of course I did get a second sock syndrome even though I cast on the second sock for this immediately and then I just left it for like two and a half weeks. Um, but since... I have the other sock cast on. Let's move into whips, shall we? Since 
since I've already mentioned it, I might as well just start off with the second sock. Um, I've put it on the sock blocker so you can see the progress. Um, and this is where we're at. Um, I have made a lot of progress in the, sorry, there's a, there's a stitch marker on the back of this making a ton of noise. Um, I've made a ton of progress on this uh, sock in maybe like the past three or four days. Um, this is pretty much what I've been working on exclusively since the start of Socktober, um, mainly because I want to free up these needles because I'm going to be doing a uh, test knit of a pair of socks. It'll be my first test knit for socks, but they're very, very pretty and I'm super excited. Um, I don't think I'm going to show the yarn yet. I kind of want it to be a surprise, so I'll show you the socks either over on Instagram um, or on the next podcast episode. But I'm really excited to finish these up. This yarn has been really good. And at first I was like, oh, this is perfect summer yarn. Um, and now I'm thinking this is perfect yarn for autumn. I mean, it's got like the greens, it's got the orange, it's uh, kind of making me give like a little bit of pumpkin vibes, maybe caramel apples. Um, so maybe they're just really versatile. I don't know, I really like them. Um, and I can't wait to wear these. The only thing is, uh, like I said, I'm still pretty new to sock knitting. So um, the the finished sock is big. It's very big in the foot. And then I tried this one on earlier today and it's tight. It's not like too tight, but it's fitted, I should say. So that's weird, but it is what it is, I suppose. Not a whole lot to say about this other than I can't wait to finish it. Um, and... I'm really loving this knit right now. <laughs> so. Oh, you know what? I do want to share one more thing. Um, these socks have been living in this project bag. Um, this is by Wuthering Sheep. I actually purchased this um, at my local yarn shop, uh, Darn It Anyway, in Stillwater, Minnesota. And um, this is such a cute bag. I love that it has the double sides. It has a pocket in the middle. Um, and the drawstring is really, this is just a really good bag. So this is what my um, sock has been living in uh, when it's not in the project bowl. So moving right along. Um, I did mention um, my sock head hat, so I'll just show that to you. Uh, this bag is from Marshmallow Knitwit, Knit Marshmallow Witch Knits, which is cat. Um, I love this bag. You guys have heard me rave about this bag a million times over. Um, and here is the start of my sock head hat. Oh gosh, let me, let me fix this mess here. Why don't I? Maybe that's not gonna happen. Um, and this is La Bienne May. I got this uh, from my local yarn shop as well when they had a trunk show. Obviously, I haven't been working on it a ton. Uh, like I said, the socks have been taking up majority of my time. Also, um, I don't know how to wind my yarn properly on the Swift and Ball Winder that I ordered from Knit Picks a while ago. So um, all of my yarn ends up looking like yarn UFOs. It creates quite a mess um, of my balls of yarn so um, I think that's kind of been stressing me out a little bit uh, I would like to figure out what my issue is there I know a lot of people say that the ball winder from knit picks sucks but I do have it so like I'm kind of just stuck with it um, so if anybody has the uh, ball winder from knit picks and knows how to avoid the issue that I'm dealing with <laughs> I would, uh, I'd appreciate some, some assistance. So, um, I have been working on one project quite a bit as well, um, and definitely a lot more before I started working on my socks. Um, last time I showed it to you all, um, it was not as big, um, but here's my habitation throw. I'm just going to hold it up in front of my face so you can really see all of the gorgeous colors. Um, and just as a quick rundown, um, these first one, two, three, four yarns are inspired by my favorite podcast, My Favorite Murder, which is a true crime podcast. Um, when I originally started knitting this blanket, um, I was only going to knit on it while listening or watching something true crime, and I've since kind of strayed away from that. I've actually been watching a lot of anime while working on this, um, and if you're wondering, I'm currently working my way through My Hero Academia. 
uh, really enjoying that right now. Um, and this blue yarn is not uh, true crime inspired. This is another yarn from Valkyrie Fibers, um, which is perfect, except for the fact that it keeps dyeing my hands blue while I'm knitting it. Um, fortunately, I don't have that much left, so then it'll be time to move on to another color. I am a little worried about uh, washing this, um, but I have gotten some good tips from uh, fellow knitters to help me avoid any um, big issues. It is getting quite large. It is about two feet long. Um, I want this to be about as long as I am, <laughs> so I know this is going to take me quite a long time to work through. Um, but uh, did I say what this is? This is a habitation throw. Um, I got it while it was either free or discounted uh, earlier on during the pandemic, and I started it just about that time. Um, so I've been working on this for maybe about five months now. Um, and I do plan on putting a lot more time into this. Um, it also smells fantastic because I use, um, I think I might have it right here. It's not in here. Um, I use a Tuft Woolens Lanolin hand balm on my hands every time before I pick it up so it has this wonderful, wonderful smell. And if you haven't used anything by uh, Tuft Woolens, I highly encourage you to uh, check them out and grab some of their products because they're amazing. They'll be linked in the description. So that's the blanket. Again, I've been working on a lot of really simple projects, so there's not a whole lot to um, write home about, you know? So, um... I have started my very first sweater project. Um, I'm going to be knitting the Nurture Pullover by Andrea Mowry, and I have started with the sleeves. Uh, I am knitting both at the same time. I did do, these were on the same needle for a hot minute. Um, I was doing two at a time, and I like the idea. Um, but, let me see if I can get this to focus. Um, so this is the start of my sleeves. I'll show you one just so you can focus on the color. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the purple and it's got like flecks of pink and blue in it. There's not much that I've worked on because I had these both on the same needle and I wasn't loving all the yarn management of like switching the balls, making sure nothing is getting tangled. Um, so I'm just working on the sleeves right now. Um, and I'm really excited to be working on a sweater. I mean, I know it's just the sleeves at the moment, but I have a feeling that once um, Socktober is over, this is going to be what I focus a ton of attention on. Um, and I wish I had more to say, but like I said, I've been starting a bunch of projects, working on them a little bit, feeling the need to cast on, and then repeat. So um, my whips aren't all like really far, too far progressed. Um, I'm hoping the next time that I talk to you, I have way more finished objects than I do whips. Uh, but I, I this was my first time buying a sweater's quantity of yarn. Um, again, I went to my local yarn shop and um, kind of treated myself. This was like my graduation present to myself was buying a sweater's quantity. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did graduate uh, from college in July. Uh, I purchased this in shortly thereafter. Um, probably around August and uh, I I really like the purple purple is not usually a color that I'd wear um, but I'm trying to change up what I knit with um, based on like how I'm feeling or if the yarn inspires me um, based on like nature or um, just some sort of like feeling I would really like to um, knit something inspired by like a piece of art just taking colors from those art project taking colors from a piece of art that really inspires me and creating a piece of knitwear with it um and then the purple just really kind of felt like it was I don't want to say that it was like calling to me I felt really drawn to it um my mom's favorite color was purple and she was the reason that I was even able to knit in the first place because when I told her I wanted to knit she was so excited and she bought me the um 
the supplies to do it. And uh, I think, you know, I've been missing her a lot lately. Uh, my mom passed away um, in 2012. And um, I don't know, it's just kind of a nice little, um, nice little uh, ode to my mom, I guess, uh, which maybe I wasn't thinking that too deeply into it. But the more I keep looking at that purple, I keep thinking like, oh, that that's my mom's purple. So um, that's the start of my sleeves. Again, next time I speak with you, I'm hoping to have a lot more progress done um, with this. So I do have one more whip to share with you. Um, I am working on some holiday gifts. Well, I'm working on one holiday gift, and it's this one. Um, this is cross-stitching. Um, this is the start of a cat. There will be four for, what am I doing? Four, okay. uh, this will be like four corners of cats. Um, and I'm really, the pattern is fine. The only thing I don't necessarily love about this pattern is the um, black cat is like really hard to see on the pattern because um, it's a lot of white and not a lot of black. Um, the other cats look fine. That's like my only complaint. So this is where I'm at with this right now. Um, Again, haven't been working on it a whole lot. Could definitely be spending some more time on this. Um, it's October, and then for the folks in the cross-stitch community, it's Stitchtober. So this is potentially on my list of things to finish this month. Um, so, I, I mean, I just really haven't been working on it a bunch. I think once I get through the Black Cat, I'll feel a little bit more inspired to finish up the rest. Uh, this one is just really hard for me to look at in particular. Um, I have really uh, intense sensitivities to um, screens, bright lights, contrasting colors, and uh, so I think once I'm done with this cat, the rest will be a breeze. Did I say I only had one more cross stitch to show you? Because I have two. Um, I did share this last episode. Uh, I'm not sure how far I was, but I've made quite a bit of progress um, since I last spoke to you. Um, I really haven't made a whole lot of progress on this. Um, I'm, I like that you can see the difference in the blues. When I'm staring at this and stitching on it, it is a lot more difficult to see. Um, but I am really excited about this one. So. This is on my list of things to finish this month as well. So not that I've like tallied it up or anything, but I'm about to right now. Um, so the things I'd like to get done this month are the sock, the second sock of my pair of socks. I'd like to finish my cat cross stitch. I'd like to finish my landscape cross stitch. And then I have the test knit that needs to be done by November 1st. So that's four projects to be done by the end of the month. I think that should be more than doable if I actually like space them out appropriately. Um, I've been making a lot of headway on this sock, so I have a feeling it'll be done within the next uh, three or four days. Um, so that's it for uh, whips. And um, I kind of want to move into some life stuff. job. I start on October 26th. Um, I'm going to be working as a dietetic technician at an eating disorder um, clinic. I'm very, very excited. I'm going to be working with the adolescent campus. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm really excited. It's a, an amazing opportunity and to be able to find a job that feels like it'll be really rewarding and, uh, you know, applies to my degree so soon after graduating during a pandemic has been like, whew, I have been stressed. I have been so stressed looking for jobs. I was spending hours upon hours on Indeed and LinkedIn and all these like, you know, just trying to find a job because you only have so much time after you graduate college and then it's like you gotta pay your loans do you have a job yet responsibilities and um so i'm i'm really really excited to take this next step um in life <laughs> and um it feels really really awesome to i mean 
my interviews went amazing. I felt like they were, all the pieces felt like they fit together. Um, I just, I really got along with the person I was interviewing with. And then when I had my second interview, um, I, I got along with those two people so well. And the job sounds perfect for me and what I want to do um, career-wise. Um, and a lot of people think that when you get a nutrition degree that you're automatically trying to do like weight loss coaching or something with diets, work in a gym. Um, and I don't want to do that. I want to do something so much more rewarding. I want to do something that's actually going to help people. I don't want people to think like, oh, you have a degree in nutrition. How am I supposed to lose weight? And it's like, that's not, that's not why I got into this. I've talked many a times with friends on Instagram and just a lot of people about my views on nutrition and body positivity and uh, my disdain towards like the media and fat phobia and just like all these things. So I'm really, really, really glad to be able to do something really rewarding. <laughs> um, am I nervous to be working with kids during a pandemic who are going through something really difficult in their life? Absolutely. Um, but I think it's going to teach me a lot. I think it's going to teach me more than I would have thought I'd get in a job. And um, I'm just really looking forward to the opportunity. So that's probably the biggest life thing that I have to share. I found out about two, three weeks ago that I got the job. So I've just been kind of like spending these last few weeks um, just soaking up the rest of my free time, I guess, um, before I have to work every day. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's really all I have to say about it. Um, and uh, I'll definitely be letting you know how I'm adjusting and uh, getting on with it once I start working. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is books. I have been reading a ton, like a lot lately. So I recently took a break from Twitch and just being online all of the time, um, mainly because I was just, I was just online too much and it was starting to like kind of mess with my anxiety. Um, I was getting stressed. I wasn't sleeping very well. And so I just, I took a break. I think it's really good for everybody to try and take a social media break if they're able to. Um, it was about two weeks. I'm slowly starting to kind of work my way back into a little bit of Twitch here and there, social media here and there, um, but not like overwhelming myself and just jumping back in head first. Um, but while I had been taking my break, I started reading like a ton and I read um, three have I read three books? I might have read four books. The first book that I read, which I like jumped into and was so excited was House Rules by Jodi Picoult. Um, I'm a really big fan of her writing and um, I did not like this book. I was so upset. Um, it's about a boy who has Asperger's and is very, very, very um, well versed in um, forensic science and uh, a murder happens, he seems a little too close to details, uh, they start to consider him as a suspect, uh, and it was very predictable. It was it was very predictable, I didn't enjoy the ending, I knew as soon as I hit like page 200, I knew exactly how the book was going to end. Um, I was really hoping that it wasn't going to end the way that I thought, and I gave it a chance, I read it all the way through, I probably could have DNF'd it, and I wouldn't have lost a moment of sleep over it. Um, and when I was done with the book, I was stewing. I was so upset. So um, if you like Jodi Picoult, that's not the book I'd recommend. Uh, I think that 19 Minutes is a really good book of hers. I think that um, The Suicide Pact is a really good book of hers. She's a, fan she's a fantastic writer, but this book was not it for me. So um, would not recommend. So the other books that I read were graphic novels. Uh, let me start by saying I've never read a graphic novel before. Uh, this past month and I enjoyed both of these. Um, <laughs> I realized I made a face and I'll kind of explain why. Uh, the first book that I liked, which I really loved, was called Heartstopper um, by Alice Oseman and this was adorable. This was about a um, 
couple of teenagers. It is, I'm assuming this is young adult. Um, they're in high school, uh, and one of them is out, gay, popular, um, but endured quite a bit of bullying. Uh, the other is a rugby player, starts hanging out with this new friend, starts to kind of question why he's enjoying spending time with this new friend so much and it's just really wholesome it's cute it took me about like an hour to get through i didn't realize that you could blow through a graphic novel so quickly uh this is volume one uh volume two is available for uh pre-order i haven't decided if i'm gonna pre-order it yet um but i really thought this story was really wholesome and i would like to know where our characters end up uh, i don't want to spoil too much but it is a really good read i really enjoyed it and I thought that art was really, really beautiful. Um, the second book that I read was called Anya's Ghost. I picked this up because I thought that the art, the cover looked really cool. And as I was reading the synopsis, um, it sounded really interesting. Uh, and then I, it just wasn't like... I enjoyed reading it. I think I enjoyed reading it because I'm still new to picking up graphic novels. Um, but the... The height of the story wasn't a whole lot. The ending really didn't leave me like feeling any particular kind of way. Um, and I just, even the art is good. Uh, it's better than anything I could do for sure, but it didn't, it wasn't anything that wowed me too much. Uh, so I would maybe give this one a two and a half, three stars. Um, this isn't anything that I felt like I wanted to rave about, um, whereas Heartstopper was a little bit more exciting for me. Uh, I thought it was adorable. So uh, those are the two graphic novels that I read. Um, I did listen to two poetry books uh, last month. I read Shout by um, Lori Hels Anderson. So she wrote Speak, which I believe is considered a young adult uh, novel. Um, I read it when I was younger. It was very eye-opening, um, really emotional, and so I wanted to read the book of poetry. Um, I think I gave it a three star because some parts of the book, of the of the poetry uh, throughout, were like really slow, kind of bland, and then others were like really powerful, really in your face, really emotional. Um, so for me, like it was almost too much of a drastic. Um, it was just too much. <laughs> like, it would be like, okay, I, I'm just relaxing. I'm kind of listening to this. And all of a sudden it was like emotional. And then it was like, uh, and then it was like emotional. So um, I don't think it was well paced throughout. Um, I also listened to it. So I probably think maybe if I had read it, it would have been a little bit different. But there's my thoughts on that. Um, and then I read Milk and Honey by uh, Rupi Kaur, which was uh, recommended to me by a friend and I loved every single poem. I loved every single poem in this one. It was just powerful, beautiful, word choice was amazing, the stories told just like made me feel every feeling um, and I, I thought it was beautiful, absolutely loved it. Um, that's all I have to say. If you, if you like poetry, haven't read that. I know it's been really popular. I'm like really late to reading it, but I haven't been reading anything really in the past like three years. Um, I would like to read more by this author, um, so I will be digging to see what will be next. But um, yeah, so I did, I did start Pride and Prejudice, and I got about halfway through, and then I DNF'd it because. I apologize to all of my Jane Austen fans but I just couldn't get with it. Like, I understand that for the times, things made sense, but I just, as I was listening to it, I was cringing, and I just, you know, I just, it wasn't working for me. So I ended up not reading it, not finishing it. Um, I have read it before, so I do know the story, um, but, you know, I don't have much to say. It's Jane Austen, it's Pride and Prejudice, if you don't know it, I mean, I'd be curious to know where the rock is you've been living under, um, but I think it's okay to, like, not love something just because it's a classic. Like, just because it's a classic doesn't mean it needs to be, like, romanticized, you know? There's nothing romantic about the fact that this is just 
<laughs> Today it is. It's well written. Don't get me wrong, but it just... I don't have a whole lot to say, all right? So I'm, I'm not gonna. Um, right now, I'm currently reading Solaris, which is a sci-fi um, novel. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting into it because sci-fi isn't really my thing all the time. Um, and then I'm reading In the Dream House, which if you're looking for a book club or getting with bookish people, you should join the Discord because I have been putting, I, I have put together a very low key, low energy book club. Um, and that's the book we're reading. It's under 300 pages. I have it set up into three parts, uh, about 80 pages at a time. And um, yeah, book club talking about books, reading books. Who doesn't love it? Um, so the Discord should be linked in the description below. Uh, and then I'm almost done listening to Girl, Woman, Other. And I'm not going to say much about that until I finish it because I love it. <laughs> and I want to talk about it for hours, but I kind of have been rambling for quite a while. Um, I think it's really well written. I love the different perspective of all the characters. I love the writing style. I love everything about it. Um, but I will talk about that one a bit more once I have finished listening to it. I have about two hours left of it on the audiobook, and I like this book so much that I would consider buying it. I think I will buy it um, in a physical copy. So that is all for books. I've been reading a lot lately, and then the past like week haven't been because I've gotten really back into crafting. So I'm either reading a ton or I'm crafting a ton. I would like to somehow mix them together so I am like knitting and listening to an audiobook. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have there. So um, I, I think that's all I have for life things, but we do have a little Q&A. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take me. I, I've been talking forever, which is fine, but this Q&A might take me a while. So I did ask over on Instagram and in the Discord for some questions. Um, I'm just going to go through them and we will see how far we get. Um, I'm going to start with the Discord questions and then I'm going to go and find our Instagram questions. Um, so. Uh, first question, what do you like most when it comes to starting new projects and what is your favorite thing about new projects? Uh, I would have to say, um, I love yarn cakes. <laughs> I also love being able to go buy new yarn. Obviously, who doesn't? Um, but it's really nice to see yarn and be like, this is exactly what I want it to be. I think it's going to be great. Um, and I think the best thing about starting a new project is just all the potential that it has, especially like for myself, I have been knitting for a very long time, but I'm still new at things like sweater knitting and sock knitting. So it's really nice to see these things take form while I'm also learning something new. Um, hats, I love casting on just because they're so mindless for me. So starting a new hat is just like one of those things where it's like, yeah, I have something I can work on if I'm watching a movie that requires like all of my attention or if I want to just, if I just want to do something easy. Um, so I think that my favorite thing about casting on a new project is just knowing that there's tons of potential to be had in a knitting project. Um, second question, what is the fastest item you have made and how long did it take? Um, hats. I can blow through a hat in a day, maybe, a um, couple hours, depends on the type of yarn. Um, and as I've said way too many times on this podcast, and even today, I really like making them. They're very easy for me, and I like to knit hats the way that some people like to knit socks. So hats, hands down. Um, next question. Do you always complete your current project before starting the next one? No. <laughs> I get really bad cast on itis. I always want to cast on a bunch of projects. Uh, right now, my goal is to finish at least half of my whips before I start casting on new stuff. Uh, test knit aside, because the test knit needs to be cast on pretty soon. Mm. What is your most favorite project you've completed? Uh, what is your least favorite project? My least favorite project was a test knit I did, I think about three months ago. It was meant to be like a summer tea. I hated the pattern, I hated the project. I thought that the pattern was poorly written. Um, 
I was confused the entire time. I made so many mistakes and the finished object looked treacherous, awful, no good. Um, and then my favorite project that I've made might be the first pair of socks that I did. They're DK socks. Um, they're the rye pattern by Tin Can Knits. I think learning how to make socks was really awesome for me and I really, really enjoyed the process. I, I enjoyed being able to take advantage of my local yarn shop, which is what kind of got me going there a lot more. Um, and I'm really good friends with the uh, owner of the shop. She's amazing. Uh, everybody in the shop is amazing. And they all were very, very helpful in teaching me the knit socks. So I would definitely say that's probably my favorite. Um, last question from the Discord. Uh, which project made you feel like, oh, I can really do this? Like when you realized you were doing well at a given craft. Um, I think I would say the Rift Tea that I did. So I've been knitting for a long time. I've been knitting for over 10 years now, um, but only in the past like two years have I really explored new projects, new techniques, things that I'm unfamiliar with. And I think the Rift Tea was really um, a reflection of that. It was my first top and there were techniques in it I'd never done before and um, it the fit ended up being wrong but that was just because I can't do proper measurements um, but it you know it looks like the pattern I had very little issues I had lots of help from Instagram fam um, but I think getting that done and it being like a finished object I was like this is awesome this is the coolest thing I have made a top I am unstoppable. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would say that is, that is the one. So now I'm going to find our questions from Instagram. I took screen caps because this was quite a while ago. Uh, biggest crafting pet peeve. Uh, weaving in ends. I don't like weaving in ends. I find it to be one of the most tedious things in the world. Um, who was the first person you made something for? Oh, my mom. I knit her a red scarf. I wish I still had it. I don't know what happened to it. I really wish I still had it. My mom was my biggest fan when I told her I wanted to learn how to knit. She was all for it. And, um, though purple was my mom's favorite color, red was like a good color on her. So she bought the yarn herself. I knit her a scarf. It was terrible. It had holes in it. It was not good. She loved it. I do have a photo of her wearing it. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere on my Instagram. She loved it. And I loved that she loved it. And I wish I still had it, but I don't. What's your favorite thing to knit? I'll leave that one for you to answer. <laughs> it's hats. It, it's, it's hats. Uh, when did you start knitting? I was in high school when I started knitting. Um, I say it all the time. <laughs> I've been knitting for over 10 years, so I was a freshman in high school when I um, first wanted to learn how to knit. I sucked at it, um, and then I knit a ton my sophomore and junior year. Didn't knit for like a year after that. Um, I didn't knit for a couple years after high school, and then I got really deep into knitting, took another knitting hiatus for like a few years, and in the past like two and a half years, I've been real deep into the knitting game, so... Uh, I don't know if that covers all 10 years, but I've been knitting for a long time. Um, and that is the end of our Q&A. It wasn't a whole lot, but I did appreciate that people took time to ask some questions. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really all I have for this podcast. I know I've been going on for quite a while. Um, I'm hoping that this doesn't take me too long to edit, but thank you all so much for taking some time to join me in knitting podcast madness today um happy socktober if you are doing socktober um i'd love to know what you're working on i'm finding my first socktober to be really inspiring already um and again we have a socktober thread in the discord uh we have lots of sock fanatics so um it's been really fun talking socks and knitting and all crafting so definitely join the discord it's a really great group of people if you don't know what discord is or you're unfamiliar with discord uh you can reach out to me on instagram i'd be happy to talk to you about it um otherwise follow me over on instagram i'm fairly active over there 
Um, and I, I don't know if I'm going to film a second episode this month. I thought I wanted to do two episodes a month and then with life and just my energy levels, I've I've settled with once a month. If I can podcast at least once a month, I will call that a success. I might see you guys again this month. Otherwise, I will see you in what will be most likely a snowy November. So thank you. Stay empowered. Stay healthy. Stay amazing. And I will see you all in the next episode.